pleasant good night to you and I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Um, it's a joy and a privilege to be with you this Friday night and um, as we discuss issues pertaining to the family. And uh, tonight I want to address a, a subject as it relates to our children, you know. We as parents, we all want the best for our children. We want um, what is right and what is good for them. And so, you know, we will do any and everything so that our children can have the best, um, even to have the things that we could not have. So, um, I trust that it's going to be an interesting topic and so I invite you at this time to text or call somebody and tell them that we are on, send the link, uh, let them know that we are on um, so that they too can join in in this discussion and be blessed as we share from God's word. Amen. Let us bow for prayer this time. Our Heavenly Father and Eternal and Righteous God, we come before you in order name but the name that is all powerful, the name that is above all name. And so, Father, tonight I ask, O oh God, that you will help us as we study your word and as we worship. I pray, O oh God, that you will grant us wisdom and grant us understanding. And may your word have free course in our lives. I pray that you will help us to explore possibilities that we have not explored before. Help us, O oh God, to zero in on things that we have not zero in on before and i pray that you will help us oh god father that as we study your word give us insight give, give us wisdom and give us revelation knowledge father in the name of jesus i ask that you have your way tonight father as we give you glory we give you honor and we give you praise tonight in jesus mighty and precious name amen praise the lord well Welcome the worshipers at this time as they come to lead us in a time of worship and celebration unto Almighty God. Amen.
love you, Lord.
Welcome back, and um, you know I trust you enjoyed worshiping the Lord. And um, when you worship, do not be afraid and do not be ashamed. Do not worry about what the neighbors will think. It's not about them. It is about you and Almighty God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, so tonight we want to look at the scripture, and the scripture tells us in Proverbs chapter. 22 and verse 6 it says to train up a child in the way he should go and uh, when he is old he will not depart from it now this is uh, a command from the Lord it's a scripture that says that you ought to train your child in the way he should go now I know a lot of men, a lot of people are discouraged when they look at the world and how people are turned out, children rather are turned out to be. Many are becoming rebellious, many are becoming lawless, and many are following gangs and at a very early age getting involved in in things that are illegal. And, uh, you know, the police have to intervene and etc., etc. Now, because of this, many people um, ask themselves, why bother? Why bother to train your children? Because, you know what, it's, it's, training your children is not an easy thing. Um, why bother to put in all that effort? And at the end of the day, the children will make their own choice and choose what they want. You know, so why put in the effort if that's going to be the outcome? The thing about it is that you and I don't know that that's going to be the outcome, because many people have trained their children in the in the right way, and and it's stuck with them. As a matter of fact, I remember certain things that my mother would have taught me. She was not a, a Christian, but she believed in certain things and at a very early age she would teach me whatever she knew about God and and some of the things that you know she taught me I held on to it and it made me a better person it made me stay away from trouble it made me stay away from fights it made me stay away from illegal drugs up to a point um, you know it made me um, think twice about doing certain things so the the young man I turned out to be, you know, though though um, I don't want to use the word frivolous, but um, careless at times. Let me use that word, um, you know, and carefree and would get into trouble and do a lot of a lot of things that I shouldn't, you know. Although I did those things. Um, for a major part of my life, while I did those things, there were also things that I was afraid to do because of what my mother taught me. You know, uh, one of the things that I never got involved was gambling. I, I never liked gambling at all. I used to hang out with gamblers. I used to watch them gamble. But I never gambled, you know, because my mother taught me. She taught me certain principles, how to be kind and how to be nice to people and and stuff like that and and a lot of that helped to shape me and to 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 be the person that I was you know um, although she was not a Christian and never taught me about Jesus but from whatever she taught me I learned to fear God and whoever God was 
at that time, I learned to fear God. And there were certain things that I knew that God would not be, um, God will not be pleased with and God will not approve. And so um, I avoided those things. So when the scripture says that we ought to train up a child in the way he should go, we should count that as a privilege and an opportunity. The fact of the matter is that we have to do what we have to do and then God will do what he has to do. And sometimes God, God cannot do what he wants to do until you do what you should do. You know. Now that doesn't mean that God is, is, is powerless or God is not powerful. That simply means that God has set certain things in motion and he would not violate some of the laws that he has put in place. Like take for example, one of the laws that God has put in place is that he made man a free moral agent. And that's why he will not push man to do anything. He will um, allow man to make a choice. And when man makes a choice and man chooses him, he responds to the choice that man makes. On the other hand, if man chooses evil and go the way of evil, then God will stand up, watch man go evil and, and leave him. He will warn him. He will try to send his angels and them to bring... Um, you know, to help steer him in the right direction. He will send, you know, allow his Holy Spirit to convict that man, etc. and so on. But at the end of the day, if that man chooses evil, then so be it. God will not force the man to do good. That's just who God is. You see? So we must understand that there are certain things that God will allow. And uh, God is waiting for you and I to make the right choice. So when it says to train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it means if you train them that will help instill certain values in their life and keep them on the right track and even if they stray at some point in time what you have taught them will come back to bring conviction upon their life and uh, it is up to them to make the right choice then, then and there. You see, God will not force anyone and he doesn't expect us to force anyone as well. He expects us to teach people the truth, teach them the word of God and allow them to make the decision. If they make the mistake, they make the mistake. If they make the right choice, they make the right choice. But at the end of the day, we have to teach people and then they make the choices at the end of the day. We raise our children so that you know they will become mature, they will become mature Christian and devote their life to the Lord. This is the ultimate goal, this is the ultimate purpose. However, I say that you cannot force them. You know, we can impose some measures to get them to that place. But at the end of the day, the choice is theirs. Because if you force a child and he chooses to serve the Lord, he will probably just choose that just to please you. But whenever he gets an opportunity to make his own choice and stand his own two feet, guess what? He's going to do that. See? So we have to teach. This is why the Bible tells us that we have to teach our children from very early. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, it tells us that we ought to teach our children. And when you teach them and what you taught them remains and they make a choice based on what you teach them, then you would have succeeded. But if you force them, then you have not succeeded. See? So we all want to raise our children so that they will become mature Christians and that they will devote their lives to the Lord. Now, whether or not our children will develop a personal living faith in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior is beyond our control. We do our best and hope, hope that they will turn out right. So, I know a lot of times people are 
concern about whether their children will turn out to serve the Lord or not. And I often say to, to parents, you do the best that you can and trust that you have taught them enough not just by preaching to them but you have taught them enough by living a life or an exemplary life for them and leave it up to God I know sometimes it's a reproach for pastors where pastors children go astray and uh, I I have realized that I mean I have seen big big when I say big uh, well seasoned ministers holding high position in the church and their children went astray you know and, and sometimes you you say well boy that that pastor I mean if he, if his children go astray who is you and I but I have also seen that some of those children who went astray came back and became ministers themselves and the generation that comes after them are serving the Lord so there is no telling what can happen you and I have that responsibility to teach our children train them not just pong Bible in their head but actually live it live a life of faith live a life of prayer and live a life so that they can see the hand of God in you and through you I believe if anything my children who serve in the Lord if anything made an impact upon them it's not how well I preach and how well I tell them about the scripture is how they see God work in my life my wife and I our lives are an example and a testimony to them how they see miracles happen when we pray and let me tell you when you could do that that makes an impact upon your children you don't have to teach them scriptures and beg them to go Sunday school and stuff like that you know, they see God in you when they see God in you they don't want anything else they want God as well see so I encourage you don't look at the the bad side or the flip side of things and look at how you know um, many people their children not serving the Lord and all of that and you know take that to mean that listen as they say you know whatever will happen will happen so why make the effort no you have to make the effort because what you do will impact upon their life and it will help the choices that they make some of the choices I made as a young man, I made them because of what my mother taught me. Some of the things I chose to do, it was because of what her, she taught. And some of the things that I chose not to do is also because of the things that she taught me. So teach them. Train them. And the Bible says that when they are old, they will not depart from it our children need to accept God's offer of forgiveness for themselves we can't do it for them and the sooner you come to that realization it is better your children might grow up in a home and go into church with you and be in Sunday school and all of that 
But you have to know that they have to accept the Lord Jesus as their Savior for themselves. They have to do that. You cannot force them to do it. They must come to that realization that they are a sinner and they need a Savior. Forcing your children to be baptized will not help them. I remember one, one day a man, you know, passing by church, saw me there, stopped and came, you know, and started to talk. Are you the pastor of the church, etc.? Yes, I am the pastor and so on. We started to talk and, you know, he lived in a good ways from the church. But he happened to stop by because he passes there always. And so you always see the church closed most of the time, he, you know, he passed. And um, so happened he saw me there and so he came and we chat and... And he said to me, Pastor, he says, I want my daughter to get baptized. I said, well, hey, that's a great thing. I said, well, what church do you all go to? Where do you all fellowship? Well, we don't fellowship anywhere. You know, so I begin to probe a little more. You know, how all us are just like that. You want your daughter to be baptized. So I uh, inquire how old the child was and so on. She was about 11, somewhere there about. And, you know, he wanted her to be baptized. So I begin to probe into it. Well, why do you want her to be baptized? Well, Pastor, I want her to be baptized so, you know, things will go good in her life. And right there and then I realize that he has no idea about what, what Christianity is about and what baptism is about. And, and so I started teaching him and explaining to him, you know, well, you know, I'll be willing to baptize your daughter. But what about you? Do you want to get baptized? No, no, I just want my daughter to get baptized. And I started to explain to him what is baptism and how we go about baptism and why do we baptize. And, uh, you know, eventually, eventually he left and never came back. Why? Because I wasn't bending to his thinking. All he wanted was for me to baptize his daughter. And it doesn't matter whether she believed in baptism. It doesn't matter whether she understood baptism. It doesn't matter at all. All he wanted was, about, was his daughter to be baptized so that she could feel safe or whatever. Or he could feel safe for her. And that's, what, that's not what it is about. Our children have to make that choice. We can't force them to be saved. We cannot force them to be baptized. We cannot force them to do the things that we want to do. Forcing them to go to church. You know, sometimes that when they're small, we have no choice and whatnot. But there come a time in their life that when they have to make that choice and they make that choice on their own. So we must realize that we cannot save our children. We can't save nobody as a matter of fact. Where our children is concerned, we can be a good example to them by the way we live, by how we pray, how we read our Bible, how we attend service, how we treat the people in the church, how we treat people in the community, you know, by our character, our characteristics. All of those things will be a contributing factor to teaching and training our child. But we cannot make them serve the Lord. That is something that they must come to terms with on their own and they must desire to serve the Lord for themselves. We can't do it for them. It is our responsibility as parents to bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4. It is our responsibility. Now, it is not the responsibility of the government. It is not the responsibility of the teachers. It is not the responsibility of the social workers. It is not the responsibility of our family um, and friends. It is our responsibility. We must teach them. You know, here's, here's something that we see parents doing. Parents do not want to serve the Lord, but they want to send their children to Sunday school. They want to send their children to church. But they themselves don't want to come to church. Let's kind of evaluate that a little bit. When your child 
you pushes your child to go to Sunday school, but your child don't see you go in the church. How do you suppose that impacts upon their life? Does that impact um, positive on their life or does that impact negative upon their life? Does that child grow up to say, listen, when I am of age and I can make my choice, I'm not going to church, you know, I'm only going now because you forced me. But there will come a time that I won't go. You see. Going to church and going to Sunday school and these things should be pleasant. It, is, it should be something that children want to do. It should be something that they see their parents doing. Now, now uh, uh, a lot of parents, they don't want to convert to Christianity. They don't want to submit to Christianity, but they want their children to go to Sunday school. They, want, they see that as the best for their children. Well, how come it's best for your child and not best for you? You want to go one way when you want to send your child the other way. It, it doesn't work that way. You have to understand that it is important, it is imperative that you be the example for your children. And so you must realize that it is your responsibility. Now, in a lot of homes, the fathers shirk that responsibility and palm it off to the mother. They throw it off to the mother, you know, and, 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 you know, allow the mother to go to church and carry the child to church and, and you know, tell the mother, make the children um, get, get dressed, dress them and send them, you know, but you know your wife going to church, you see. You have to realize that it is your responsibility. It is nobody else's responsibility but yours. And so you have to own up to that and uh, bring them up in the fear and the discipline of the Lord. You have to do that. Don't leave that for other people. Don't shirk that responsibility off and hope that the government or, or the teachers in school and somebody will take up that responsibility. It is yours. You need to own up to it. The first thing that we should do is to teach our children about God. We teach them about everything else. We ensure that they have good uh, um, academics, good education. They become proficient in, proficient in some field and some trade and whatnot. And we spend money, time and effort to ensure that they get these kinds of training. And little to no effort at all to see that they know about God. You have to teach your children about God. If you want the best for your child, you have to teach them about God. The Bible says, how shall they call on him whom they have not heard? If you don't talk about God and God is not in your, your language and your vocabulary, your vocabulary, how will they know about God? How will they believe in him of whom they have not heard? How do we expect our children to believe in God when we don't talk about God and when we don't teach them and when they don't know anything about God? How is that possible? You have that responsibility. We need to teach our children to know the truth about the world, the truth about themselves, and the truth about their Creator. And it is, as it is revealed to us in the Bible. And in Deuteronomy, it is Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5 to 9. It is recorded where God told them how to teach the children and write the scriptures on the doorposts and the lintels and etc. etc. You know, it is our responsibility to teach them. And we cannot ignore that and hope that they're going to learn somehow. You have to teach them. I have to teach them. We have to instill these values in them. It is important for our spiritual life to regularly read our Bibles, 
to have a healthy prayer life and to attend church services and so on. It is important for us to do those things. We cannot teach the children about God if we ourselves don't know God. We must know Him. And that must be demonstrated in a home by having family devotion, by reading the Bible together. You know, we, we set them off in front of the television to watch cartoons and all kind of ungodly stuff. And we allow the television to babysit them. But we don't take no time to read our Bible and pray with them. So what are we teaching them? We are allowing YouTube and social media to be their teachers. We are allowing these things to shape their lives when it is you and I should be shaping their lives. You and I. So don't shirk your responsibility and don't give up your responsibility to something else. You do what you ought to do. What you know that you have to do, you do it. Pray for your children. Let me tell you, they are in God's hands. Pray for them and trust that you have done the best and what you have done, that it will remain with them. They will see value in what you have done. Tonight, as I close, I want to remind you that training your child is your responsibility. The Bible says that you must train up your child in the way they should go. That when they are old, they will not depart from it. If you teach your child and they walk away from God, that's not your fault. It's theirs. They have a choice to make. And it doesn't matter what you do they will eventually make a choice. But I believe we can help shape their thinking so that they will make the right choice. Your f the future of your children is in your hands. Nobody else's. It's in your hands. Father, I thank you, O oh God, for your word. I thank you for giving us the wisdom and understanding that we so greatly need. I pray that you will help us, Lord, that we will become what you desire of us. I pray, God, for your guidance. I pray for your direction. And I pray, O oh God, that you will help us, Father, that we will take this responsibility serious. We will not play with it. We will not joke with it. But, Lord, we will see it as our responsibility and know that you will hold us accountable someday. Help us to do our utmost best to teach them, to pray for them, to instruct them in the right way, and to trust you to keep them. Continue to bless our children, O oh God. Lord, remember our children. You know each one of them. You know where they are spiritually. Those who are serving you, those who are not, Lord, we ask for your divine intervention upon their lives uh, right now, wherever they are. Ask that you will touch them and bring them closer to you and bring them into a deeper relationship with you. Father, I ask that you have your way in their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise the Lord. I trust that you have been blessed by this word and that, you know, you would have received from God's hand and realize that this responsibility is yours and nobody else's. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is Pastor Alpha Amluchen of the House of Praise, New Testament Church of God, located in La Fortune, La Ramin, saying unto you that with Jesus, the sky is the limit. Do have a productive and a blessed weekend.
and uh, looking forward to see you in church on Sunday morning. Be blessed.